Hey, how you doing? Right, I'm feeling reasonably confident and we're going to look at the anatomy of the final parasympathetic ganglion of the head. We're going to look at the ciliary ganglion. I think my aims today are both brevity and clarity, which don't always go together. The ciliary ganglion is going to the eye. It's a little complex, mostly because of the nerves that are involved running to it, past it, and what's actually going on in there. So we're going to talk about the sympathetic ner neurons, the parasympathetic neurons, and some sensory neurons that are either running through the ciliary ganglion or near the ciliary ganglion, but are generally contributing to the ciliary ganglion, ciliary nerves, that sort of thing, right? That's the aim. And um, got to use a whiteboard. Okay, then let's take these one by one. We're talking about the eye. What is the role of sympathetic innervation in the eye? It's um, dilation of the pupilla. So the dilator pupillae muscle is innervated by the sympathetic neurons and causes the, the pupil to dilate, to let more light in, right? Um, where do those sympathetic neurons come from? They come from the, the thorax. So all of the sympathetic neurons come out of the spinal cord in generally in thoracic levels. And those preganglionic sympathetic neurons run out to sympathetic ganglia nearby, synapse with a second neuron, a postganglionic sympathetic neuron, and that then runs off to its target. Now, you remember what a ganglion is? A ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies. In there, we generally have connections between a preganglionic neuron coming in and a postganglionic neuron going out, so a first neuron and a second neuron. Okay, how do those sympathetic neurons get from the sympathetic trunk in the thorax or in the neck to the orbit? Well, sympathetic neurons, I was thinking about making the ciliary plexus, uh, sorry, the ciliary ganglion out of pipe cleaners, but <sighs> sympathetic neurons travel throughout the body, and these are generally postganglionic sympathetic neurons, travel throughout the body to all the reaches of the body, and to do that they often follow the artery. So if you look at a large artery, you'll see a fine filigree of little, little nerves running around the outside, and those are probably sympathetic neurons. Now if we're thinking about the eye, what major artery is posterior to the orbit? It's the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery runs through the carotid canal into the cranial cavity and then as it makes this S shape it then pops up directly posterior to the orbit which means that the ophthalmic well the branches to the eye are going to pop through the superior orbital fissure to get to the orbit. Uh, the sympathetic nerves then, the sympathetic neurons that are getting to this region they're going to follow the internal carotid artery up jump off, dive anteriorly through the superior orbital fissure to get to the orbit. Okay, what other roles do sympathetic neurons have in the eye? Uh, I think that's it. So what about parasympathetic innovation to the eye then? What role do parasympathetic neurons have in the eye? Well, uh, pupillary constriction, so the opposite of the sympathetic neurons, um, Parasympathetic neurons innervate the constrictor pupillae muscle, causing the pupil to become smaller. Um, shine a light in your eyes, and anyway. Um, and also, the ciliary muscle of the ciliary body forms a ring, and the lens is in the centre of that ring and suspended by a whole bunch of fibres. Now, parasympathetic nerves cause the ciliary muscle to contract. Now, what happens when the ciliary muscle contracts is that the ring essentially gets smaller, which means there's less tension on the lens. So, um, when you're looking into the distance, when you're looking, uh, focusing on an object a long way away, uh, the ciliary muscle, the ciliary body is relaxed, so that the lens is pulled tight, so it's quite thin, and you focus on a distant object. The parasympathetic neurons cause the ciliary muscle to contract, and as that ring contracts, there's less tension 
on the lens, causing it to um, causing the lens to kind of become smaller and, and fatten up. That's the important bit. It fattens up, and you're then able to focus on a, a near object. That's accommodation. So the parasympathetic neurons in the eye innervate sphincter pupillae and the ciliary body. Now, where do those parasympathetic nerves come from, and what about the whole preganglionic, postganglionic thing? Which cranial nerve innervates most of the muscles of the eye, extraocular and intraocular? It's cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve. So the parasympathetic neurons that do the things we just described come from cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve. And as with everything else, they get there by passing from the cranial cavity through the superior orbital fissure. The parasympathetic neurons, like the sympathetic neurons, they have like a, a first neuron that meets a second neuron which goes off to the target. And that's what the ciliary ganglion is really. The ciliary ganglion is a collection of parasympathetic nerve cell bodies. So the preganglionic parasympathetic neurons from the oculomotor nerve coming into the orbit by passing through the superior orbital fissure pass to the ciliary ganglion and meet a second postganglionic parasympathetic neuron and that parasympathetic neuron is then going to run off to those target structures that we just talked about the constrictor pupillae muscle and the um, ciliary body the ciliary muscle what else ah uh, sensory so the cornea the clear covering of the anterior part of the eye there is incredibly sensitive to touch. So lots of sensory neurons run from there back to the brain. Likewise, the conjunctiva covering the sclera, covering the white part of the eye, sends a whole bunch of general sensory neurons back to the brain. What is the, the, the cranial nerve that does most of the general sensation work of the, of the face? It's the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five. So then we have neurons, general sensory neurons, passing from the cornea, for example, back to cranial nerve five, and it's gonna be the ophthalmic branch, uh, the first branch of the trigeminal nerve, and then back to the brain. Again, those are gonna pass back through the superior orbital fissure. Okay, so we've got our three things. Let's join it all up. Right, so sympathetic neurons can kind of take a couple of routes in. They jump in through the superior orbital fissure, then they can do a couple of things. So they could come in uh, this way, or they could come in this way. All right. Let's have oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three. That's coming in and it's bombing past because it's more interested in getting into the extraocular muscles, right? So, um, this is cranial nerve three, but in there are some parasympathetic neurons. Um, that's part of cranial nerve three. Maybe I should do these in, in like, have I got a fine black? What's this? Preganglionic, I should draw this like, preganglionic parasympathetic neurons coming in here. Uh, Now it's, it's only the parasympathetic neurons that are going to synapse in the ciliary ganglion. So they're going to meet with a postganglionic parasympathetic neuron. And that is then going to run into the eye. Big orange eye. These sympathetic neurons here are going to also run to the ciliary ganglion. And they're going to go. They're going to go straight through. So this, these are already postganglionic sympathetic neurons because they've already um, synapsed with the preganglionic sympathetic neurons, probably in the neck. But what we've got here now, then, is we've got this is the ciliary ganglion. All right. The other thing we've got are those sensory fibres, right? So we've got. Um, the nasociliary nerve up here. So these are going to be, oh, as usual, 
This is the nasociliary nerve. So these are neurons from the trigeminal nerve, from the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. These fibers can take a couple of routes. They can either go straight into the eye here, or some of them will dip down here and run into the eye, again by passing through the ciliary ganglion, but not synapsing in the ciliary ganglion. They're just going straight through. And we find that actually these sympathetic neurons, because look, we've got nerves going in here, these other sympathetic neurons, they're just going to take the same path because this is what nerves do. They tend to run together. This is wiring, they say bundle together, right? Ah, right, okay. So we've got cranial nerve three running through here, chucking off some parasympathetic neurons. The synapse in the ciliary ganglion run into the eye. We've got some sympathetic neurons that run all the way through. We've got some other sympathetic neurons running up here. Here's the nasociliary nerve, but we've created a nerve here and we seem to have created a nerve here. Now this nerve here, this mixed nerve of sympathetic, parasympathetic and sensory neurons would be the short ciliary nerve. So it's running from the ciliary ganglion. As far as the anatomical nerve is concerned, the, the stringy bit we can see is running between the ciliary ganglion and the eye, but that's how it's formed. So if we've got a short ciliary nerve, and it seems sensible to name this bit here the long ciliary nerve. And that's it, that's the ciliary ganglion. Just remember that actually the sensory nerves are kind of running in that direction and that's CNV1 and anyway you get my gist and that is why I don't make videos with whiteboards very often but that's the ciliary ganglion that's what it's made up of I think the understanding is the most important bit the, the bits that feed into it and also the, the, the parasympathetic neurons the ones that are actually synapsing in the ciliary ganglion everything else is just is just running through and uh, suffice to say the ciliary ganglion is of course <laughs> within the orbit with all the other stuff okay that's it I've done the full parasympathetic ganglia of the head not sure I've done it very well but you can see why I was worried about doing it it's difficult to explain anyway enough wittering we'll see you guys next week maybe